Having a home lab is one of the most important things that you can do to develop yourself as a cybersecurity professional. Or if you're interested in cybersecurity concepts, it's one of the most important things you can do to get a deeper, more intimate understanding. As a student, it gives you a safe space to experiment with all kinds of different concepts in a safe way. As a business leader, it can provide a safe space for you to test out different things that might be handy in a business environment. And of course, as a cybersecurity professional, it's critical to make sure that you have your home lab to test different things that you might be able to bring with you out into the trade. There are two ways to make a home lab. First, you could make a Raspberry Pi or you can make a virtual machine. If you're not familiar with what a Raspberry Pi is, it's a small mini computer. It's about 30 bucks on Amazon. There's a link down below. These things are awesome. They're cheap, they're easy to build and deploy, and they can use any operating system. The only drawback is limited hardware resources. So don't expect to go password cracking with the Raspberry Pi. Another drawback is they're not food. I know that joke is made all the time. I had to make it. The other option is a virtual environment. If you're not familiar with what that is, check out this video for more details. Virtual environments are awesome as well, and they can provide great scalability and portability for your testing environment. Your virtual machine can be free using an app like VirtualBox, link in the description. Not only are they free, they're easy to share, deploy, scale. You can do all kinds of things with virtual machines. If you wanna download someone else's image of a virtual machine, you can do that. If you wanna share your image of a virtual machine, you can do that too. There's all kinds of things that you can do with a virtual machine. You can use any operating system with a virtual environment from Mac to Linux to Windows. Whatever you need to use, it's there for your virtual environment. The only drawback is that they require a lot of resources from your host computer. So what can you do with your home lab? Well, first you can build and test various applications and programs, whether you're learning a programming language or you want to test an application like Wireshark. Since it's a cybersecurity channel, you could also do a target environment where you have an attacker and a target. So like a Kali Linux machine and any kind of deliberately exploitable virtual machine or Raspberry Pi, what have you. And of course, you can always test out various admin skills and tasks using the command line, navigating through directories, whatever you need to do. You can even build your own active directory in your home lab. So what do I use for my home lab? Well, I have two Raspberry Pis. I have two monitors. I use an external keyboard for my Raspberry Pis. I have a hub so that way I can connect my monitor to the Raspberry Pis. And of course, I have my gaming computer where I can deploy virtual environments using VirtualBox. That brings me to a very important point. You want to make sure to add variety to your testing environment. So a combination of Raspberry Pis and virtual machines allows for all kinds of variety in the testing environment you want to create. Your virtual machines, for instance, can be your targets and your Raspberry Pis can be your attackers. You can do anything you want to do with this kind of environment. It's really, it's all up to you and your imagination. And if anything, you can learn how to network computers. You can start with that. And as you get more familiar with the concepts, you can start to branch out and get into all kinds of technical stuff. One caveat for your testing environment, make sure that you do not let it touch the internet, especially if you have a deliberately exploitable machine. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and get our home lab set up. Now I can already tell what you're thinking. Where'd your beard go? Well. Much like my friends and family, when it found out that I was making a YouTube channel, it left. So if you're setting this up with a Raspberry Pi, you're probably going to have one of these. Now I have two Raspberry Pis and I set them up in a tower. Both of these have links in the description if you want to get one. The fun fact about this tower actually is you can stack it up to four. Since I only have two, I stacked it up to two, but say I got two more Raspberry Pis, I could stack them all up in one tower. It's a nice compact little thing. And I mean, it's your home lab, there you go. Very nice and tidy. Now, if you're setting up with virtual machines, you'll probably have uh, your gaming laptop. And this is mine, it's a ROG Strix. There's a link down in the description for that as well. As far as configuration and setup goes on initial purchase, for a Raspberry Pi, all you need to do is build it, which I mean, effectively, the motherboard is already built for you. The SD card that comes with it has a pre-configured Linux distro called Noobs downloaded onto it. Now, if you wanna put a different operating system on that SD card, you can totally do that. Uh, there are plenty of resources online to, to show you how to do that. For your virtual environment, you'll need to download a managed hypervisor. And we're gonna be using VirtualBox. 
link for VirtualBox in the description as well. So with that, we'll go ahead and show you how to get started on both of these. So to set up your Raspberry Pi, all you need to do is plug it in and boot it up. It's that simple. So as you can see, it doesn't come with any IO devices already on it. So you have to get a keyboard, mouse, and monitor in order to operate it if you don't have one already. Don't worry, there are links for those in the description as well. I'm also using this wire hub, and that allows me to hook all of these up and the monitor to the Raspberry Pi without using too many ports. The nice thing about these Raspberry Pis is they come with four USB ports, an ethernet port, and an HDMI port. So it's not like space is a problem on either one of these devices already. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and boot it up. You can see that it is booting up here on the screen. We'll give it just a little bit. Now it might take some time on initial boot because it needs to run through the directory and make sure that it is reading all the files. It's as simple as that. And from there, you can do whatever you want. All the different research projects you'd like to do, you can do from your Raspberry Pi. Next, we're gonna build our virtual environment. For our virtual environment, we're gonna use VirtualBox. So go to virtualbox.com and download the most recent version, link in the description. We already have VirtualBox downloaded, so we're just gonna pull it up. As you can see, I already have several virtual machines downloaded, but we're gonna focus on Dragon, which is a pseudonym for Kali Linux on my personal machine. To get Kali Linux, you're gonna to wanna to go to offensivesecurity.com, go to Kali and InfoSec Tools, click Kali Virtual Image Downloads. And as you can see, we have options for both VMware, VirtualBox, and Hyper-V. We're gonna go ahead and expand the VirtualBox images and go ahead and download the 64-bit Kali Linux. Of course, since we already have Kali installed, we don't need to do that now. So we're gonna go ahead and boot Kali up. Since it's an image, we don't have any more configuration we need to do. If you do wanna add additional configurations, go ahead and hit Preferences, and you can navigate to all the different options you have. Once you're ready, go ahead and boot up your virtual machine. And just like that, we have a fully ready to use virtual machine. If you wanna turn the machine off, you can of course go to the command prompt and type sudo shutdown now, or you can hit the X on the top right corner and hit power off. So with that, I wanna hear about your home lab. Leave a comment down below. Tell me all about your home lab. Also, if this video is helpful, leave a like and then also subscribe for more content. I'll be posting every week. Thanks for watching.